Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about the regulation of glycolytic pathway. As we have already learned that glycolysis is a 10-step enzymatic process where glucose is converted to pyruvate and in this process, ATP is generated along with NADH, which is subsequently used in other metabolic pathways. So the starting point of glycolysis is glucose. From glucose, several intermediates such as glucose 6-phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates are generated. Ultimately, pyruvate is formed and followed by production of NADH and ATP. That pyruvate can be channeled inside the mitochondria in format of acetyl-CoA which can be utilized in Krebs cycle and followed by an electron transport chain to generate more ATP. So this whole process of using glucose and channeling it into glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport system ensures us that we have enough amount of ATP for other metabolic and biological processes inside a cell. Let's imagine a situation where we have too much ATP at, this, at a particular time. Now in this situation when we already have a lot of ATP, making further ATP would be a wasteful process, right? And that is the beauty of our metabolic pathways. In this kind of circumstances, body has alternative ways by which it can channel the intermediates of the glycolytic pathway, such as glucose 6-phosphate, which can be channeled into pentose phosphate pathway for production of reducing equivalent such as NADPH. And these reducing equivalents can be used for any oxidoreductase type of reaction. Now, glucose 6-phosphate can also be channeled for production of glycogen via the process of glycogenesis and the glycogen production takes place in liver and muscles where it is stored it's like a fixed deposit of glucose so we can clearly understand this 10 step enzymatic process of glycolysis is highly highly regulated and totally dependent upon the energy demand so let's look at how depending upon the energy situation and nutrient availability this process is regulated so First of all, this process is highly regulated by allosteric modulation of several glycolytic enzymes. Now, all of these enzymes of glycolytic pathway are not under allosteric modulation, but key enzymes such as hexokinase, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase are under the control of allosteric, allosteric modulators. Now, let's look at what are the allosteric modulators of these enzymes. So, let us assume a situation where ATP is high. In this situation, we don't need any more glycolytic flux. We need the flux to be deviated towards other pathways such as pentose phosphate pathway or glycogenesis. So we want to stop the reaction. How we would do that? Like the body does it by modulating uh, the level of the modulating pyruvate kinase and phosphofructokinase activity. So ATP concentration work like an allosteric modulator. An increase in ATP concentration prevent phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. You can clearly understand from this pathway if these two enzymes are inhibited, their activity is inhibited, the glycolysis won't take place. So the glycolytic flux would be deviated to other pathways. On the other hand, if AMP level is high, that means ATP is low and the body is under uh, energy demand and body needs energy. In this situation, AMP concentration works like an allosteric activator of phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. In this situation, the flux would flow through the glycolytic pathway and the glycolytic pathway would ensure ATP would be generated and ultimately a lot of en energy can be uh, generated using this glycolytic pathway. Now, there are other substances such as acetyl-CoA and citric acid, which are actually part of the Krebs cycle. So if these substances are already present, so glycolytic pathway is already not required because there are alternative sources of acetyl-CoA and citric acid. So Krebs cycle can work on and from the electron transport chain, quite a lot of ATP can be generated. In that situation, it would be a futile attempt to uh, run the glycolytic pathway. In that situation, what happens is Acetyl-CoA and citrate both inhibit the phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase and thereby preventing the glycolytic pathway to flow. Now, other than that, 
the fructose 6-phosphate, which is an intermediate of glycolytic pathway, works like a feed-forward activator of phosphofructokinase. So if fructose 6-phosphate is there, the system already knows now we cannot channel the flux to other pathways. So we have to channel it via the forward reaction. So the feed forward reaction ensures pyruvate is generated via glycolytic pathway. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is also another activator of this particular pathway. So we pretty much learned about all the enzymatic controls of glycolytic pathway and how it is allosteric, how the allosteric modulators of these enzymes are important to regulate the glycolytic flux and generation of ATP, which is crucial for cellular functionality, especially for stem cells and cancer cells. Now, apart from all of these kind of allosteric modulation or modulation of the enzymatic activity, there could be transcriptional control. For example, hypoxia induced factor or HIF1, which is actually a transcription factor which is activated when there is hypoxic situation or lack of oxygen. This controls nine glycolytic enzyme out of the 10 glycolytic enzymes and thereby regulating the process of glycolysis. So not only there is enzymatic control, there is also transcriptional control on the pathway of glycolysis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And do let me know in my comment that how do you like these videos? Thank you.